In this video, I want to look at initialization, and hopefully that term is familiar to you. The term can be applied to the initialization of objects or the initialization of variables. We've covered these topics, but now that we have local and instance variables, it's important to revisit variable initialization just to show that Java handles them differently. So to do that, I've created two classes, Initialization 101 and Initialization 101 Runner. And inside of the Initialization 101 class, I've created the method init method 1. And what we're going to do inside of that method is create two variables, num3 and num4. They're local variables. I want to try and print out their values. And you may say, well, that's crazy. They haven't been given any values. How can you print out anything? Let's see what happens. In order to test the init method 1, we're going to have to create an object of the Initialization 101 class. And we've done that, and we've called it init. And now we want to use the method. So we say init.initMethod1. And what that's going to try to do is print out num3 and num4. And unfortunately, we get an error. Why would we get an error? Because no values have been given to num3 and num4. And therefore, you would get a compile error saying something like num3 and num4 might not have been initialized. You can't do anything with local variables, like add values to them, take away values from them, or even print them out without initialization. So let's go ahead and initialize them. We've given them the values 40 and 50, and point out local variables should be initialized. If you don't do this, it's very easy to get an error. So now that we've initialized the variables, if we were trying to run the program, it would work just fine, and it would give us exactly what we expect, num3, 40, num4, 50. Next, I want to talk about instance variables. So I've created two of those, num1 and num2. Remember, instance variables have scope throughout the entire class. And so they would have scope inside of init method 1. So let's see what would happen if we would try to print these values. So I've said num1, num2, and I've tried to print them out. What do you think would happen if we tried to run the program? Let's find out. If we tried to run the program, surprisingly enough, the instance variables are assigned values by Java. So you see they're given default values, and the default value for an integer data type is 0. So we learn instance variables do not have to be initialized. Java will initialize them for us. Int is not the only data type inside of Java. So what would happen if we created another instance variable, like double num5? Would it give us an error, or would it assign a value? All instance variables are assigned a default value. So for the double data type, it would be 0, 0.0. Next, what if we had the character data type? It's going to assign a default value. Let's see what that value is. And we actually cannot see it. It is being printed there. It is a space. So a character, by default, is going to hold a space inside of it if it's an instance variable. Another data type, which is Boolean, Boolean only has two options, true or false. Can you guess which one it would be? Well, let's go ahead and run it and see. And it would give us false. And the last data type that I want to talk about is string. This is true of all objects, but it's also true of string because strings are objects. If we tried to print this out now, it would give us null. Pretty much everything gives the equivalent of zero or nothing when Java assigns a variable for us. So it's very important to understand that local variables should be initialized. Instance variables, if they're not, they're going to be given values. Let's go ahead and sum this up then. As we said, it is good to initialize local variables. It is very hard to use them in a meaningful way without them being first initialized. Even if we give them a dummy value like 0 or 0, 0.0 or two empty quotes if it's a string. Instance variables, on the other hand, do not need to be initialized and are often not initialized at the top of a program. We're going to be talking about where they're commonly initialized when we talk about constructors. But if those variables are not initialized, they're going to be assigned a default value. And so that default value is going to be something like 0 or nothing. And I've given a little table here to indicate the data type and the default value. 
any integer value, byte short, int, and long would get 0. Any real data type, double or float, would get 0.0. .0. The character data type gets a space. The Boolean data type is assigned to false. And a string, or any object for that matter, is assigned to null. Understanding the difference between initialization of local and instance variables is just another piece in the Java puzzle to understanding how classes work, how they interact together with their variables and their methods. Understanding this will go a long way in keeping you from unnecessary frustration. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly. Thanks again for watching.